Right, so these two rig strips, what I'm going to show you in this video, are probably the rigs that I catch the most fish on during the year. And they're actually two very simple rigs, but we couldn't not add them to the range because they're just my favourite two rigs and the rigs that I can't wait to get out. So they are the F1 Dibber rig and the F1 Mudline rig. So basically that's when your fish is shallow and when you're fishing in the shallow water, which in the summer months is what I can't wait to do and it's brilliant fishing. So I'm going to talk you through them two rigs now. Now, the first one I'm going to touch on quickly is the F1 Dibber rig. Now, through the summer, I do loads and loads of shallow fishing. Like I say, it accounts for some really good weight and you've just got to make sure you get the rigs nice and simple, but also nice and positive and strong and reliable. So every all my sort of components and the way I do things is around it just being nice and durable. So the float itself, this is a RW Divers float. This is the number three version. He does the one, two, three, and four in that range. And that's just to do with the amount of weight down the line, sometimes to do with the bait that you're using. So maggots, for example, a lot lighter bait than, say, a six mil pellet if you were fishing for F1s. So you might want to use a number one with maggots. You might want to use a three or a four with a bigger pellet. just suspends the bait a little bit better. So this one's the three. I'd say that's probably a good all-round for pellets, maggots, casters. So that's the reason I'm showing this one. So the number three dibbers. Now line wise, I just want to put some 017 line on. Now that's the one when you look on the rig strip, it'll tell you you want 017. So that's Guru Engage 017. I find that when you're using little floats like a dibbers, you don't want to use like an 022 main line, even though you want something nice and positive. You want to use a good compromise where it's not going to affect the way the float's fishing. So I just find 017 is brilliant for that. Often when you're shallow fishing, you're catching sort of F1s and smaller carp. And that's just a good line to use for that 017. So I'm going to attach that onto the rig mate. Now, if you look at the rig mate strip, you'll see all the shot on this rig are down in the bottom part of the rig. So it is a very simple rig strip. So I'm not going to dwell too much on how I sort of add the shot onto the rig with this one, but it's just more about the uses and you know what components you need and how I maybe would tinker with that shotting pattern on the bank. So I'm just going to attach the float quickly on to the line. So I'm just going to cut a, you know, the end of the line to make sure everything's nice and easy for threading my silicon on. Just put my float on now. Silicon I use, again, when you're catching lots of fish in the summer, I do use a slightly thicker silicon than I might use in the winter time when it's a little bit more just fishing for a fish and nice and delicate. Um, so I use, this is the 0.5 silicon, what Richie Wilson sells on his website. It's actually Stonfo silicon, really good quality silicon this. Not really, really thick, but just a nice wall diameter where it's nice and strong you're not going to have it ripping when you're catching lots of fish like i say that's a 0.5 these two floats what i'm showing you the dibbers and the muddies float we've got a fairly thick stem i think we've got a 0.8 carbon on the dibbers and a one mil glass on the muddy so you do need a 0.5 silicon and on the website on richie's website it does tell you what sort of silicon you need for each float but just as a guide 0.5 silicon on these positive floats now because the dibbers and the muddies are a very short float, I don't actually put three pieces of silicon on. I just don't think you need it. So I'm just going to put two pieces on. So I'll just cut one about six mil, one about 10 or, 10 or 11 mil, a little bit longer. And that's all you need, two pieces of silicon. I find all that happens when you add a third piece of silicon is it just might encourage the float to hold up a little bit on the surface tension. So just put two pieces on. Ooh. Thread that on. And then you can just push it on nice and easy. But it's still nice and tight on the float as well. It's not going to slide about too much. Again, that, that bottom piece of silicon is just going to overhang on the bottom, which I think when you're shallow fishing, it's really, really important because when you've got a real short little rig, sometimes these rigs might only be a foot long in total. And if you have don't have that overhanging like that at the bottom, you can have it wrapping up and you're forever shipping in and out, untangling your rig. So that's really, really important. 
And then another important thing, don't have that bottom piece of silicon there right underneath the body of the float, especially not on a rounded float like this and the muddies because it'll cut into the body a little bit. Just make sure you've got that piece of silicon sort of a few mil down from the float and it just, you know, alleviates that pressure on the body. That's really important. Again, when you're catching lots of fish and you're pulling quite hard on the F1s when you're trying to get them in quick, it could easily damage your float if you have that silicon a little bit too close. So I'm just going to slide that up and I'm just going to tie a little loop in the bottom. Just using the Census Easy Loop tire. These are the ones that I always use just the bigger easy loop tire in the census range and I just think that tire's a really good knot so that's the one I always use. And I'm just gonna cut that nice and tight to the knot leaving probably a couple of mil of a tag end just in case of any slippage but you shouldn't have any problems with that. Now I'm just gonna attach it onto the rig mate. Now like I say this is a very very simple shot in pattern this all the bulk is right by the hook length loop so there's no need to mark it up or anything like what I normally do basically all I'm going to do is attach them shot right next to the loop and be done with it now the only thing what I'd say and what I wanted to touch on about this rig because it says on the rig strip that it's a bulk doesn't mean that you have to keep it as a bulk obviously when you get on the bank often you might want to tinker with that a little bit so that's what I'm going to show you now now all these floats take varying numbers and number 10 shot. I find number 10s are a really good size when you're shallow fishing because they're sort of that compromise between being a nice positive shot but still quite a small shot that's going to give you a bit of a foliar bait. So that's why I don't tend to use like one number eight. I might use two or three, four number 10s and I just find that works really well. So I've got number 10 stots. Again, anything from 017 mainline and above. I do use number 10s, so I'm just going to put, uh, sorry, I use stops, not shot, because you just find that with thicker line, you're having problems getting sort of number 10s onto thick line. If you want to move them, it might damage, so just use stops when you're doing this sort of thing. So put some number 10 stops onto the table, and I'm going to put on this, number 3 takes about 3 number 10 stops. And then it allows you to put, you know, up to a six mil pellet on and the float will still sit there nicely. So I'm just going to put them right by the loop. And I just lift the pin up just to do that, just so I can get everything nice and close to the loop. Right, so simple as that. That is the starting rig tied now when i'm at home and i'm just tying them up that's how i'll leave them and i'll wrap them on my winder like that but when i get onto the bank what i often find is you might want to change the foliar hook bait when you're shallow fishing now if you feel like the fish are really watching the caster or the pellet fall what you can do is you can maybe space them shot out now what i don't like doing at this that sort of in the summertime is having like a strung out pattern but what I might do to space it out is I might just have sort of you know a few mil or up, you know maybe an inch between the shots you've got more of a strung out bulk and that's just sort of spreading that bulk out a little bit so it's not the fish aren't picking up the whole bulk at once that can sometimes help you get a few more bites and also hit more bites but also what I might do is do what I sort of call sort of like one up, two down, or two up and one down. And what I mean by that is I might actually have one of the shot under the float, so then I've only got two number 10s down the line, so it's slightly slower fall. Or I might drag that other one up and just have that one down the line, so I've got a real nice slow fall of the hook bait. So by using stots, it just makes it nice and versatile. So don't just see this rig strip and think, I'm going to leave all my shot on you know the top of the hook length that's how i would tie it up at home but that rig's a little bit more versatile by you know than that so just wanted to touch on that just for anyone who's interested in you know how i might shot me shallow rigs for sort of different situations so that's the rig done and i'm just going to wrap it up onto the winder now this float i probably wouldn't use it much deeper than say 18 inches two foot deep now I still sometimes might want a little bit of line above the float, maybe up to 
maybe three foot of line if you've got a real flat calm day. So I'm probably going to do this on about eight turns of the winder. So I'm just going to attach it onto my winder. I'm just going to count eight turns on. So that's eight. And I get to the top of the winder and I just tie a nice big loop going to allow me to attach it to the top of the winder. And then that's my finished dibber rig. Really simple, but again, really important that you get all them components right. The silicon, the main line, which size float, using your stots so you can move them about. All them things are going to make a really versatile rig and one that I catch loads and loads of fish on every year. Now, the next rig, which I wanted to show you in the next strip, is going to be the mud line rig. So I'll just replace my dibber strip with my mud strip. So this is for, like I say, mud line fishing. And that's not just mud line as in across to the far bank. That's also when you're fishing right against the mud in the edge. Basically shallow water style fishing. Again, more of a summertime rig, so it's nice and positive. All the components are exactly the same, so I've got stops above the hook length, I've got my 070 main line, I've got um, my silicon, 0.5 silicon, everything like that's the same. The only difference is these mudline floats take a little bit more shot than my dibber rig. So I'm going to show you again, tying that up, but I can run through it a little bit quicker. So I've just got my muddy float, I've cut the end of my line to give me a nice clean piece of line. Two pieces of silicon. One about 5mm, one about 10 and 11mm. And you can see now the beauty of this rig, mate. Once you've started going with tying some rigs, how quick you can sort of start to rattle through a few rigs. Really, really efficient, especially, you know, as you've got everything to hand. So, two pieces of silicon. Again, it's only a short float. There's just no need to put three pieces of silicon on. So, again, slide that bottom piece of silicon there so it's a few mil under the float so you don't get any line marks or any breakages. And the second piece, just leave that hanging over a little bit. That's nice and secure on the line. Tie my loop, pull it nice and tight, cut the tag end off. Now, again, just gonna, while I get my shot ready, I'm just gonna position that onto the rig, mate. I'm just gonna get some number eight stops. Now this float takes six number eight stops, and again, they're all going to be down above the hook length. What this rig's about is about pinning your hook bait right on the bottom and keep everything tidy. So what you don't want is to put your bulk of shot mid-depth or near the float, like, like you might do when you're shallow fishing or you know when you want to slow fall the hook bait. With this, it's all about getting it down quick and holding it still. So that's why all them shot are going to be right by the hook length. So again... Just to make it easy, I'm going to pick the pin up so I can easily put them shot near the loop. I'm just going to quickly put six number eight cubes on. Now, another really good thing of things what people might ask now is, how come I haven't put hook lengths on these rigs? Or what hook lengths would you put on the rigs? Now, this is something that's also included on the rig strips. Um, that I'm showing you today. It's exactly what hook lengths I'd use and the lengths and you know the different hooks. And I think that's really important. So on this rig, I tend to use quite a short hook length, three inch hook length. Like I say, you're fishing in shallow water and you want everything, like I say, nice and positive. So a nice three inch hook length tends to be sort of 013, 015 line, normally catching a few carp. So more on the side of 015. And sort of a decent size up, 14 Super LWG, nice and positive for putting bunches of maggots, 
big piece of worm, corn, meat, baits like that. But there you go, I've got simple shotting pattern, everything down by the hook, six number eight stops, and that's the rig done. Nice and simple, but everything's exactly how you want it for doing that style of fishing. So I'm just going to wrap it up. Again, probably don't want that for fishing any deeper than two foot, maybe. I would push 18 inches, two foot. So we'll do about eight wraps again. So that's two, three, four, six, seven, eight. Obviously, you know, I've been sat talking you through everything there, but you can see how quickly you can sort of do a couple of rigs. These are lovely, simple rigs, but the rigs that all summer you're going to be wanting to use all the time. So well worth having these rig strips in your armory so you can get them rigs perfect and catch loads of fish in the summer. So they're my two favourite rigs from all my summer fishing. My shallow rig, which is the dibber rig. And then I've got the mud line rig, which is my edge rig, and for fishing across to the islands, catching lots of carp and F1s in the summer.